So let's start with our today's session. So in today's uh, session, we will see what is an output and then what all types of outputs are available in Texicom system. Then uh, the application and the integration part, uh, how uh, these outputs can be used and where we can use these outputs. And in the last, we will see the uh, output programming through the Vintech software. And just for the information, uh, I would like to tell you that I have already started the recording. Let me check. Yes. So the recording of this session is also started and whosoever has registered through the link which I have forwarded um, uh, will get the presentation and the recording after end of this today's session. OK, so what is an output? So output is a negative trigger fully programmable terminal. So I would like to quickly show you where the outputs are available in the control panel, right? So uh, these outputs are basically negative trigger terminals and it gives you minus 500 milliamps. So this is the layout of a PCB board of LE24 panel, right? So on LE24 control panel, everyone can see my cursor on the bottom side, it shows OP1, right? So this is called the panel output. In all the Texicom control panels, so uh, right now we have the Premier Elite series um, in the market, and in all the control panel, you will get the outputs. Here on the bottom side, it's showing as OP1, which is the control panel output. And on the top right, you can see numbering is written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these are called the digi outputs, right? So in the control panel, you will get two different kind of outputs. One is the control panel output, which is marked as OP1. In the bigger panel, you have OP1, OP2. Then the third level panel, you have OP1, OP2, OP3, like that. So that are called as control panel outputs and the digi outputs will remain eight in all the control panels, right? Both are called as outputs only. The difference between the control panel output and the digi output is the current draw. That's it. So in the control panel output, we get minus 500 milliamps because it's a negative trigger output. And in the digi outputs, we get minus 100 milliamps as a current draw. This is the only difference we have in the output section. Otherwise, both the outputs are programmable and in same in nature. OK, so. Types of outputs, so as I as I have just shown you the panel PCB, just to uh, tell you where exactly the outputs are available, right? So. In all these. In all these control panels, zone expander keypad, you will get the outputs, right? So why I'm showing you over here like types of outputs because Texicom control system has number of outputs available in the control system. We have the control panel. We have keypads. We have zone expander. Correct. So in all these three different particular control systems, you will get the outputs. So it means if you want to trigger something through any of the output, it is possible through the control panels output, through the keypad outputs, and through the zone expanders output, right? So all the outputs can be programmable, whatever the way you want, which I will show you in the later on programming part. First, we will see how many outputs are available in the control panels. So starting with the smallest panel, Premier LE24, we have the panel output one, which is denoted as OP1. OK, so OP1 is called as panel output. And then we have digi outputs as eight. Then the keypad outputs are Sorry, this is a little mistake over here. Keypad output actually comes under the keypad section, 
right so the second panel is premier elite 48 in the premier elite 48 again we have the panel output two quantity then digi outputs eight so everyone can see over here in the digi output section they in all the control panels we have eight digi outputs these are fixed but the control panel output may vary as per the control panel which you are using correct then the third category of the panel premier elite 64w we have two panel output and one digi output correct and then we have the premier elite 88 in premier elite 88 we have five panel outputs and eight digi output then again 168 control panel and 640 control panel as as panel output and eight as digi outputs then coming to the next category of the devices which is called as keypad so in Texicom, we have the wired keypads available in all the wired keypads you will get one output so in the keypad section also we have the outputs available then the second last category is called zone expander 8 xp so this is the uh, zone expander for getting the wired zones for increasing the number of wired zones in the system right so in zone expander also there are eight outputs available so eight inputs which is called as zones and eight outputs are available right then psu 200 xp so these are the industrial grade expanders in that expander also we have eight outputs available right so friends uh this is uh you know this is the uh tabular format which i have created just to tell you that from what all locations you can get the outputs through which you can trigger the third party devices so it's not necessary that you have to uh, use the outputs from the control panel only okay because when we install a system in any site we must have a control panel we must have one keypad right so these are the must things which we have to install at the site zone expander is uh, not as much mandatory because it depends upon the requirement so we may have the zone expander or may not but we have the control panel and one keypad. These two items are important, right? So you can get the output from the control panel also. You can get the output from the keypad also. All right. So this is the PCB module which I have already explained to you. Not everything because today's uh, session is only about the output section, output programming. And also one more thing I would like to tell you that this is one of the new topic which I have taken this time as you might be knowing this that we are running this online training sessions uh, since uh, since the time of COVID and today's topic is completely a new chapter, a new topic which we have taken for you guys just to give you an idea about the output what all types of outputs are available and how we can use it right so application and integration of output so now let us see first about the application that uh, for what purpose we can use these outputs so number one is for connecting the multiple sounders we can use the output section right so let's say at one particular site, we have um, because in, in the BOQ, these are the mandatory things. What all these things are? Number one is the control panel, then the keypad, then number of sensors as per the site requirement, and then the main hooter or the sounder, right? So sounder should be there in your BOQ. 
Now, in some of the sites, we may have to give two or three or more than that number of sounders. Then what do you have to do? We cannot use the control panel power supply. The, the control panel power supply has one SMPS unit, which has a limited current draw, correct? So with that, you cannot run multiple sounders. You can run only one sounder with panel power. If you want to increase the number of sounders, then you have to use additional power supply, which is called as DC power supply and one relay module. Right? So here I have tried to show you uh, how to make the connections of three sounders. So these are the three sounders on the left side. We are using a DC power supply which is the 12 volt 2 ampere power supply you can use over here. This is the positive, and this is the negative terminal, and this is the relay module. So this relay module we are using is a 12 volt DC relay, right? So I hope you must be aware of that. Uh, what is a relay module? A relay is basically a switch. Right, so which which uh, changes the states as per the trigger given to the relay. Right, so. Now. Here you can see the two trigger terminals and on the left side. Normally closed terminal, common terminal and normally open terminal. Right, so what I have done, I have given the negative. To the common of the relay and the positive of the power supply given to the positive of the sounder. And the negative of the sounder is connecting to the normally open terminal. All right, because the relay module internally, NC and common remain short. Right. And here we are giving the triggers Number one connection is through the bell terminal. Second connection we are giving through the aux positive. Now here you can see in, in the above terminal connection, we are connecting a parallel connection with panel output one and panel output three. Right, so why we are doing this? Because we want to trigger these three sounders on a different different conditions. Right, so that is why we are connecting the parallel wires from trigger one terminal. So bell is also one of the output available. Then one parallel connection to panel output one and panel output three. So it's this is not mandatory that you have to connect these three connections, which is shown in the figure. OK, you just need to connect only. Two trigger terminals. This one and this one. It is as per the requirement we have connected this these three particular connections over here. OK, so in in simple terminology. As and when my relay gets a trigger. Through bell or through panel output one or through panel output three. From anywhere. My sounder will start booting. OK, so this is about the triggering three sounders in case if there is any such requirement. So. Um, in, in one of our customer, I, I cannot take the name because of the security reasons. One of our uh, project uh, customer who is having uh, multiple sites. So they have the requirement of connecting six to seven sounders in a single panel. Right, so we can do that using such kind of connections. We need an additional power supply and a relay module to trigger these uh, particular seven sounders at a site. So using a single panel, you can do that. OK. Then the second application. Where exactly we can use these outputs? So. 
you can use the output op1 this is the particular output which you have to use you cannot use any other output for connecting a two wire smoke detector so the intrusion alarm panel is basically your intrusion come fire system right so in this control panel in texicom control panel you can basically connect the smoke and the heat detectors along with the intrusion alarm system and in order to connect the smoke detectors two wire smoke detector or it is also called as conventional smoke detectors you have to use only op1 terminal you cannot use any other output terminal please note it down this is very important okay now let's talk about the connection part so how many smokes you can connect you can connect maximum 10 smoke detectors in a loop okay and second thing is you have to use the additional relay module oh sorry uh, you have to use the additional resistors so in case if you are using a third party smoke detector which is a system sensor in case of system sensor smoke detectors because that is also compatible with Texicom panels, you have to use a 100 ohm resistors in series connection at aux positive terminal. And in the last smoke detector, you have to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor as end of line. Right? So here in the diagram, I have shown you two smoke detectors. Right? And in the two smoke detectors, the second one is the last one. So I have put it one kilo ohm resistor in the last smoke detector. So let's say you have installed the two wire smoke detector 10 quantity. So the last smoke detector, the 10th one, will have the closing circuit along with the resistor one kilo ohm. So this is the connection of system sensor smoke detector. Great. Now the second brand. Uh, there is a another brand which is called as Apollo. Apollo smoke detector if you are using, then the connection will remain same. The only thing which you will not use is 100 ohm resistor. Okay, 1 kilo ohm resistor you have to use in Apollo smoke detector, but 100 ohm resistor which is shown over here in series connection is not required. Right, so I have told you the two different brands, System Sensor and Apollo. Like that, there are different smoke detectors available of different companies, which are also uh, compatible with Texicom system. All right. Now, let me show you another integration, which is your 220AC bulb or the LED light. Right. If you want to trigger that particular light or the bulb, that is also possible using a relay module. Now, connection is actually the same, which I have shown you during the time of sounder connection. Right. But the only thing is the relay module, you have to use the AC relay. Right. So the AC relay you have to use, which should get triggered through the DC panel. So the relay module will change over here. Why? Because now you want to trigger a AC light. Right. Or the AC bulb. Which is triggering through 220 AC voltage. Right. So this thing you have to take care. Earlier, which I have shown you over here was the sounders three sounders you want to trigger the third party sounders these are the sounder which get triggered or which takes the power as a dc power supply but in in this particular integration in this particular uh, connection we want to trigger the led bulb or we want to turn on the led bulb which gets uh, which takes the ac power supply right so your relay module will change accordingly, correct? But the connection will remain same. 
Now here you can see again we have NO common and NC, and these are the two trigger terminals, which is written as coil terminals. Okay, so it is again connecting through the output. One terminal aux positive, another terminal output one. Whether it's a digi output or panel output, you just have to configure it accordingly. And additional power supply. So these are the connections through which you can trigger the output. So these are the application area. Now I'll, I'll give you one more example. So let's say we have given the solution at a high end area, uh, uh, you know, for a resident solution. And after a couple of days, end customer says that, you know, the sounder which you have installed at my home is giving a lot of noise. So what is happening whenever any alarm triggers? Uh, you know, all the neighbors start shouting and they start calling to the police that this noise is coming from this house. So kindly remove the sounder from my residence area. Then what you will do, because if you are remo removing a sounder from the intrusion alarm panel, then there is no point of providing the security at the house because sounder is the first point. You know, whenever it triggers, it creates the noise and it creates the panic in the mind of the robber who is coming at the house. And what, what, will, uh, what will happen when the sounds get started? Robber will run away from the site. Right, he want to save his life, so he will run away. But now, end customer is saying to remove the sounder. I don't want sounder. Then what will uh, what you will do? What option you have? So you can tell to the customer, sir. I what I can do? Um, I will turn on the flashlight at your location in the outside garden area. If they have outside garden area, something like that. I'll turn on the flashlight whenever any alarms gets generated. OK, so again, you know, um, if. You can you can just uh, think of it that if robbery is happening and, you know, if someone turn on the light, obviously it will create the panic in the mind of robber. So they will run away. So you can give that kind of solution and these LED can be triggered through these outputs. All right, so in all such kind of scenarios, so these are the very limited options or the applications I have given you as an example. In the same way we have done in multiple sites and in multiple ways. Because of time constraint, I cannot, you know, tell, uh, tell you each and every example how we have used the system, but in short term uh, means in, in short, what I can tell you is that we can uh, trigger any kind of third party devices to our control panel outputs, right? So never say no to the customer because we have the solution for approximately each and everything. We just need to figure it out how it will work with our control panel. That's it. Now we will understand about the Output programming. So these connections are done. Now we have to program these outputs also in order to work as per my requirement, right? So let me quickly open the Vintec software. Just a minute. OK, uh, I hope you are able to see the Vintex software. Rahul, can you confirm me, please? OK, I think Rahul is also on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry because I've done the settings. That's why he's not able to unmute. Uh, not, not an issue. 
Okay, so uh, let's understand about the programming part. So I'm opening my demo panel, which is the live panel installed at my location. So the name of the file I have opened is Rebu Home Demo. So I'm using Elite 64 panel at my location. The version of the panel is 6.03.02, right? So I'll quickly come to the output section. So here everyone can see the output is written below the expander. So I'll open the output page. Now, uh, friends, I'll just explain you one by one all the things. This is very, very important in terms of understanding how to program the outputs. And it's very simple. It's not very hard to understand. It is just we are enabling these outputs as per whatever the function you want to uh, activate in the panel. That's it. OK, so you should be aware of how to program the output. Right. Why I'm telling you in depth programming of the output? Because number one, it is very simple. Number two, I don't want my partner who is or my uh, my friend, my engineer who is at the site and just waiting. Uh, you know, uh, for a callback from the technical support team that he want to do the programming of the output, which is very simple, right? You can also do it, do this. It's not that you have to always give to the remote access to the technical team or to me or anyone, you know, uh, who is available in TechSecom technical team that please configure my output and you're just wait, wasting the time for two, three, four hours. Right. So let's understand about the programming output. In Elite 64W panel, we have two panel outputs. You can also check it out by clicking over here. So under the panel output, click on the plus sign. So it shows you one and two. OK, so I have explained this thing earlier also that Vintex is a very powerful software in terms of your learning your understanding of the Texicom product, right? If you don't have a panel, you can download the Vintech software, which is free of cost, create a profile, and you can understand the things over here. See, right now, I have just opened the profile. I have not connected with the panel. On the left side, it is showing offline ready. Everyone can see over here, my cursor, right? So it is not connected yet. I am still able to. Uh, I can. I can still able to learn the things from the Vintech software. So I am selecting output one. Okay. One more thing, please remember: if you are connecting smoke detector on output one, because only output one is used for smoke detector. No other output can be used for connecting the smoke detector. So if you are using smoke detector on output one, then it should always be not used. Never active. OK, your output OP1 will remain never active when you are connecting a smoke detector on panel output one. OK, OK, let's talk about. Other than smoke detector, let's say uh, I want to. Um, I'm connecting AC bulb. On output one and I want to trigger the. Bulb whenever there is a, there is any entry exit alarm. OK, whenever there is any entry exit alarm, then I want to turn on the bulb. OK, this is my condition. Now how to do the programming? Very simple. Select the output. Output one on the right side. You have group type. So in the group type, you have system. You have areas. Right, you have zones. All these things are there, so you need to select area. And in the area on the right side, you can again see output functions are coming now. So. When I want to trigger the output, whenever there is any entry alarm, so I'll select as entry alarm. OK, so 
whenever there is any entry alarm in my panel, my output one will trigger. Now let's do one more thing. I want to program output number two also um, because on output number two, I have connected a third party sounder and that sounder should trigger whenever there is any alarm on zone number 10 specific zone. OK. OK, let's let's do this. OK, so before before uh, proceeding to that particular thing, you need to select the area also because that zone is in which area. So you need to select the area also. OK, remember this thing. OK, for the second output, I want to trigger that particular output whenever zone 10 goes into the alarm condition. OK, so select output number two. On the right side, select zone. Then output function alarm. Whenever there is any alarm. On zone number 10, so select that zone. Very simple. Now here you can see. Zone 10 alarm. So whenever zone 10 goes into the alarm condition. Your output number two. Will get high um, high means. You will start getting the voltage on the output. And once you start getting the voltage, the voltage will trigger the relay module and the relay module, once it get triggered, it will trigger the main sounder. OK, so that's how your outputs. Are being programmed in the system. Now let me uh, take another output, which is the digi output. Right, I have shown you in the LE24 control panel that there are eight digi outputs available, correct? Now let me uh, let's program the digi outputs. Um, let's say. I want to program. The digi output one. Whenever. There is. Whenever main doors get opened. Irrespective of arming or disarming, OK, let's say. Irrespective of arming or disarming of the system, whenever anyone opens zone number one, my output, digi output, should get triggered. OK. So let's do this. I'm selecting digi output one. On the group type, select zone. In the output function, I will select mimic. Mimic means whenever zone is active. OK, I'm not saying in alarm condition. I'm sure I'm saying in active active means. Irrespective of arming or disarming. If anyone is opening the door, it means it is getting active. OK, so. Mimic and the zone number is one. So whenever zone number one. If anyone is opening then my output should get triggered. So now what I will do. I'm connecting with the panel and I'll show you. Um, live how the output is getting active and how it is getting deactivated. So let me connect with the. Control panel now, so I'm connecting with the smart com. So it's a cloud connectivity which is happening. So obviously it will take some time uh, to show you the change is happening in the output section. So how to see the outputs in the diagnostics? OK, now. Come to the offboard comms section. Just a minute. So friends, right now you can see over here. 
my zone number one is the entry exit main door is programmed okay i have programmed the output and i'll do the send page because i have done the programming but i have not uh, you know uh, send the programming yet so let me deactivate these outputs panel output one and two i want to program the digi output only send page so i'm sending the programming now i want to send only the output programming so i'll do send page okay instead of send update remember this thing now i'll open the diagnostics so why i am showing you i just want to show you how the output is actually working okay this is the programming part which i have shown you now let's see the live demonstration so right now you can see zone 1 is high this output sorry not zone 1 digi output number 1 is showing red color red means i am getting a voltage on the output section okay why i am getting this because my zone number 1 is active i'll show you over here just wait for a while because i i have i am connecting uh sorry i have connected the vintex through smart coms so here you can see zone 1 is showing as active right so that is why my output was high now i am closing the door uh, means i am closing zone number 1 which is my main door right just give me a minute okay so i have just closed the door now just wait for a while because it is it takes the data from the cloud so it takes some time okay now it is showing secure right now you can see under the offboard comms my output will show as deactivated here right now it is off so now i am i am opening the door and you can see the output one it will become high it start showing a red led here it is right so this is called as zone mimic whenever your zone is active your output will start giving you a voltage so like that we have number of functions already programmed in the control panel there are 500 output logics already saved in your control panel you just need to program it and use it that's it now similarly we have just we uh, uh we have just saw about the panel program a uh, panel output the g outputs now let me show you about the keypad output and the zone expanders output so keypad and zone expander connects in the network port right so that's why it is showing network 1 under that you can see the expander when you when you click on the plus sign in the expander you have eight outputs so here you can program each and every output like that right then coming to the keypad because elite 64w supports four keypad so that's why it is showing four keypad first keypad is a onboard keypad in which we don't have any output so we'll program the second keypad here you can see output one is available this is called as keypad output right so you can program the keypad output also whichever the way you want all right so i hope you are able to understand these things in in the output section although i have just given you a very uh, um i would say not complete programming i have not shown you the complete programming because it is not possible in one hour of time 
but i have just given you an idea of how to use these outputs and how you can use these outputs in the programming part right and in in these output you can do the you know um, own r and d you can add the timers also that i want to trigger the output for 1 minute or you want to trigger the output after this much of delay so these things are also possible so the depth level is very very high in the output section okay so i hope you are able to understand the output part and the programming section because it is very important and very unique thing in the intrusion alarm panel so intrusion alarm panel if i talk about the the market share it is not that much just like the cctv cameras it's not like that but if we do the you know if or if we explore this particular system you will able to find lot of innovative things and you can do lot of third party integrations uh, which is not possible in any other different systems or i would say in any other intrusion system also texicom is the only make which gives you that kind of depth in terms of output and in terms of integration with any third party device all right so any questions before that let me unmute everyone so that if there is any questions you can ask as much as you want <laughs> 